please help me welcome your next guest, Matt Driscoll. Give it up for him. Oh, no, you're welcome. Yeah. Just for you. And Sean. And you. <laughs> so, could you tell us about your role at the News Tribune a little bit? Just to kind of give us some background. Sure. A little, a little media literacy real quick. Of course. Yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, so, I'm a columnist at a newspaper. So, we've got a bunch of reporters. They basically do the, the news stories, the unbiased stuff. And then I kind of come in, local news columnist, offer my uh, opinion or take, hopefully spark some conversations and dialogue in the community, things I think are important. Oh, that's really cool. So you it's can just not as cool as a 15-year-old magician, but it's, <laughs> it's like way popular, more popular than I will ever be. It's, it's well, I don't know. I mean, you, I don't totally. know. I actually think you have a good column. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's really. And so you get to write whatever you want, basically, or is that like do you just well, with, within <laughs> within certain sure yeah, but yeah, I mean, I get I get to choose uh, what I write about, things I think are important. Obviously, I have editors and, and colleagues who I bounce stuff off of, but yeah, for the most part. Uh, I make the column decisions and three a week and uh, then, then they pay me. It's great. <laughs> Big bang boom. Yeah, it's just like that. Do you have anything that you tend to find yourself like writing towards like as you're writing like that, that topic just always seems to kind of come up as I'm writing or those kind of things? Especially? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, you know, as a local news columnist, the things I tend to write about most are, you know, the things that are kind of pressing in the community in the news. So lately I've been writing a lot about uh, homelessness because obviously we've got a uh, crisis going on uh, there, a lot about the opioid epidemic uh, because that's really affecting our community. So, you know, I try to choose things that are, um, you know, Im impacting our community and, uh, you know, need further, further dialogue, further discourse. And it's, you get a lot of pushback on some of the things that you talk about. We're, we're going to show a video after oh, the you interview are, huh? yeah, of that's him be responding good. to some of his feedback. Yeah. And what is, I mean, what is that like when, you, when people will say like, just terrible things to you oh, after you've yeah. written an article? Well, I don't, you know, I'm, right? Oh, no, no I don't. No. <laughs> no. Uh, you know, I, look, it comes with the job, right? I, I offer opinions. Uh, some people like the opinions. Some people don't like the opinions. I've been doing this for almost or three years now, exactly three years almost. Uh, and, uh, you know, that used to be that like the, the, the angry, terrible email used to be kind of like the worst part of my job. Like, you know, you just get this email and it would just kind of be like soul sucking. Uh, but now we started this column and this video that we do at, at the end of the month. And so now, like at least when I get like a really terrible email, I'm like, oh, I'll just put that in a little folder over get there and sa it. save yeah. that for the end of the month. And so, you know, it's kind of uh, cathartic in a, in a way to at least have this outlet for it. But yeah, I mean, you know, the criticism uh, or, you know, uh, the sharing of opinions, it kind of goes with the territory. And so I'm, I'm open to it. I mean, I think reader uh, interaction is really important. That's kind of part of the purpose of what a columnist does. And so, you know, I try to respond to folks uh, thoughtfully when it's warranted. And, you know, again, they pay me. Right, right. <laughs> just, just to be clear. So, did you like, is this where you saw yourself going? Like, when you were, like, I don't know if it, maybe in college you were going up, you're like, I want to be a columnist, or is this just kind of something that happened? Yeah, you? well, first of all, I went to Evergreen, so there was a lot, <laughs> there was a lot of like hacky sack and, you know, all sure, this, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. drum circles. And probably, and, yeah, 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 a lot of that. I got 16 credits in hammocks. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I wanted to write. I, uh, my goal, uh, I've always kind of, um, at least, had an ability to write. So I, I was trying to figure out a way to write. So I, I went to Evergreen, uh, you know, worked on my writing, and then I got out. It was kind of right in the cusp of the Great Recession. I was like, what did I do going to Evergreen? I'll <laughs> never be employable. Uh, well, Sean and, can make that disappear. I don't know right, if No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm interested in that. Um, <laughs> and so... You know, it just kind of began a process of, okay, how can I actually support myself by writing? And I started uh, writing as a, as a journalist. I did music journalism for a while. Uh, you know, wrote for uh, alt weeklies mainly, Portland Mercury, uh, the, the Weekly Volcano up here. I was editor of that for a while. That kind of progressed. I did uh, three years, I make it sound like prison, but uh, <laughs> I, I did three, three, I did three years at Seattle Weekly uh, where I kind of transitioned to, uh, to, to hard news where, you know, again, at this point, I'm a, I'm a reporter. I'm not really offering opinions, although in the alt-press world you get to kind of play with that line a little bit. Uh, and then uh, the job opened up here uh, for the columnist position, and because I was a Tacoma guy and kind of was, you know, a little bit known in the community, it, uh, at, you know, presented an opportunity. But, you know, the columnist thing is totally, it's, it's definitely been a transition and it's taken a lot of getting used to because, you know, you're out there, you know, 
I mean, who cares about my opinions, right? Uh, and so it's kind of, a, it's kind of a. Well, it, we it, do. I mean, we all showed up to, to hear your opinions. Well, I, I heard a lot of excitement for the magician outside. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, so, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's great. I, it's, it's a great job. It's by far the best job I've ever had, and I, I really like it. And uh, I'm, I'm really kind of uh, grateful to have the opportunity to have that platform and kind of raise the, the discussions that hopefully I raise. It's really cool. It's really cool. And yeah, give it up. Yeah. Give it up to Matt. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And we were talking with the people waiting outside about uh, I think 45 minutes ago. Matt texts us and he's like, hey, I'm outside. The doors are closed. <laughs> and that was it's a true story. Yeah, they're they're shut. I don't, know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> hey. Uh, accurate, yeah, yeah. You still get. <laughs> but you don't get paid here. Is the, the I know. Outside. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. Yeah. Well, thank you. We yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah. And so we kind of were talking about like your so your columnist, you get spread over your opinion a lot. What is kind of your take on like the fake news era, where anything that goes out there could be labeled all of a sudden, oh, that's fake news, you're just disregarding. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's terrifying in a lot of ways, right? Uh, I mean, because we're we're kind of living in this environment where facts are fungible, and you can kind of silo yourself off, and you know, only hear the things that you you already are predisposed to to believe in, and anything that uh, you know kind of challenges that can just be kind of dismissed. And as a journalist, I mean, that's you know, I mean, that's a terrifying prospect. I mean, if you really think about the implications of you know, like facts not mattering, like. That's, uh, you know, that's, scary, a, that's, that's terrifying. a slippery, what, yes. what does matter if you're not Right, that? right, you know, so how do you, how do you hold institutions in check? How do you, uh, you know, uh, how do you, uh, how do you write stories in a way that, that, that keeps, keeps the, our democratic institutions in line? So it's, uh, it's, it's terrifying, but it's also, you know, probably one of the most important times to have this job in, in history because, you know, people, people need real, reliable, journalism more than ever now so it's also you know it's terrifying it's depressing uh it stinks uh but at the same time it's you know it's 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 hugely inspiring to get to get up in the morning and um, you know continue to do this because man we need it wow. yeah definitely So, uh, kind of along the line, there was a, a news, there, I saw an article that the Tacoma News Tribune posted about Como 4 and the Sinclair stuff kind of yeah. going on. Um, do you have kind of just like some sentiments about that, that you could share with us and what's kind of going on with Yeah, uh, I guess. Um, I mean, uh, first and foremost, as a, you know, as a journalist, you know, working in this field for, uh, for a number of years now, like, you know, I mean, I guess my immediate reaction is feeling a little bit sorry for some of the, you know, and. I don't know. Are they watching? Do, do you well, think I don't a lot know. of the, the Como folks watching this? I don't know. I, they might be. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure. But uh, um, for those who don't know, uh, Sinclair has been uh, making it so that people have to read certain uh, affiliated, uh, like, what would you call those? Like, um, well, I mean, I think the critique would be that Sinclair is a uh, fairly uh, right-leaning, right-wing, right-wing. Uh, uh, you know, corporation, and they're kind of forcing. You know, uh, similar to Fox News, kind of forcing stories or opinions or viewpoints that uh, kind of fit that narrative. Um, and so, getting back to my action to it, I, like I feel, I feel bad. I feel sorry for the journalists who work there because, you know, kind of being subjected to this and, and forced into that position has got to be terribly tough. Because you know, you, you hear like kind of the the hardliners or the absolutists being like, "Well, why, why don't you just quit?" You know, and it's like, you know, people have families, people have contracts that are hard to get out of. Uh, you know, uh, so you, you, I hate to use the word hostage, but you, you really feel for them to kind of because you know I've been at a paper where a new owner comes in and everything changes, and that's you know that's tough. Uh, so, but you know at the same time, like you know what Como does, you know delivering local news, like I, I have trouble believing that the bulk of the stuff that they do is really going to be you know they're doing local crime stuff, mm -hmm. local stories. You know, I mean nobody's interjecting like you know could you say Donald Trump's really good in this story about the local school levies? Like nobody's yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, you know now. It's you know the, the 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 more national stuff that they're forced to run. You know that feels gross, and I just uh, you know I, I feel sorry for the journalists that are stuck in that situation, and uh, I hope there's uh, a path forward for for those folks and for Como, because I mean it's you know as we have fewer and fewer uh, media outlets to choose from, it's important that you know the ones that we do have can kind of stay uh, you know uh, objective and, uh, and unbiased. Yeah, well, thank you for those words. Thank you all. So...
One last question for you. Do you have a favorite person that you've ever like interviewed or had to do a story on that just like got you really excited or was just really interesting? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't want to divulge too much, but I, you know, I saw these questions somewhat in advance, so I had a little bit of time to prepare, <laughs> not, not to pull the, pull the. Uh, but you know, not to be a total bummer, but like the stuff that really, like the the things that I think about that really resonate for me are, uh, you know, kind of the. Uh, the powerful stories that are that are you know I wouldn't describe as fun. Like I think about uh, a gentleman by the name, a young man by the name of Noah, who I just interviewed and did a rather lengthy article on a few months ago, who's you know battling back from opioid addiction and like he was in like really in the depths. And you know I talked to his mom and spent a lot of time like going through the family's history of trauma and like kind of how he got to that. Uh, and like those are impactful stories. And so like that that wasn't fun. I don't look back like you know look back and I'm like God that was. That was a good chat, Noah. Like we really, you know, delved into your personal drama there, or you know, your personal trauma. But uh, like those are the stories that uh, you know make me excited to go to work. Is the stories that hopefully resonate with people and show people uh, truths or uh, a side of humanity that sometimes gets lost in the world we live in, and, and you know, makes people stop and think, and, and hopefully be a little bit more compassionate and empathetic. Wow. That was really cool. Thank you so much. I, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we have more coming to you. We have a new game called The Headlines You're Not Going to Want to Miss.